Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, another tutorial from NeoJBez. I wanted to uh, show you a couple more advanced things that you might not have realized OBS was capable of, or perhaps um, you know, could learn a little more about these tools. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced, so I'm hoping that you know what scenes and sources are at this point. Um, the first thing I'd like to point out, you know, a lot of people are constantly thinking to themselves, man, I, I wish I could record what the problem is on my desktop that's happening, or they say, uh, I wish I could make tutorials, I wish I could make speed paintings, uh, all these different things. You can. OBS is a free program. OBS Studio is what I'm using right now. This is a free program. And right now I am filming this tutorial with the free program. Are you getting what I'm saying, folks? Um, there are settings in here. Um, give me an idea on the output settings. Um, when you're recording, you know, you choose whether you want it to be an MP4 or whatever the case may be. Whatever you want on your streaming, blah, blah, blah. I, my piece of his advice here, anytime you see VFR or CFR. Now, these are different from CBR and VBR. Um, VFR is variable frame rate, CFR is constant frame rate. I will tell you right now, if you use Adobe Premiere Pro uh, from like CS6 on, um, CFR is what you want. You do not want variable frame rate, you want constant frame rate. The reason is because you'll make a video and you'll throw it into Adobe Premiere and the audio will not sync at all because it it goes by the tag on the front of the file that says we're going to do this whole video in 30 fps well unfortunately your audio is jumping all over the map your video is jumping all over the map and they're not synced up all the time it's not always 30 fps unless you tell it constant frame rate i'm assuming bit rate is the same way cbr versus bbr is constant bit rate versus variable bit rate same same thing anyway uh, the reason i showed you this was uh, you can actually record whatever you like. Uh, you can have these settings. Uh, you know, tell it where you want the file to be saved to. All that good stuff. It's a, uh, you know, it's it's pretty cool. I wanted you to hear about that constant frame rate thing because I wouldn't want that to be a problem for you later if you do something like, uh, like, uh, you know, you want to do tutorials and you want to put them in a non-linear linear editor and you wonder why the audio is not syncing up the way it ought to be well now you know why so <laughs> uh, I've been looking around in here looking for FPS and I'm not really seeing FPS in the video I'm seeing bitrate um, but uh, the older OBS had a place here it is I can't do this because I'm currently uh, actually doing video but this pull down of common uh, frames per second values would have, you know, 29.97, 30, 23 for Europe, uh, 60 for high definition, you, you name it. But most of the time, American NTSC video is 29.97. Now, I can pull this down. I can put anything I want in here. And the reason I'm showing you that is because, yes, Without a nonlinear editing program whatsoever, you can make a speed painting of something and you can record it for free with OBS Studio. Uh, what you would do is you would go to settings, you'd go to video, you would change that frames per second to something like three. Um, yeah, three frames per second. Uh, when you play that back at 30 frames per second, it's 10 times faster, right? So what it would do is it would take a screenshot three times a second. When you play that back at 30 frames per second, it's 10 times faster. So if you paint an MS Paint uh, for, I don't know, eight hours, you end up with a 10% size speed paint of whatever you did in MS Paint. As a, I hope I'm making sense. As a an example of that, I'm going to goof off and paint for just a few minutes at that FPS, recording with OBS, and it'll be part of the final video.
so the point, folks, is if you really pay attention to the, uh, the settings and everything that I used, and you watch that video back, what you just saw was a mm, five or six minutes of goofing off uh, in MS Paint, and that five or six minutes equaled a little over 24 seconds of video because I took it, uh, I took the video at three frames per second, but I put it in my video editor and I told it to speed up 1,000%, which means uh, I was taking three still shots per second rather than video. I mean, it's still put together as a video. OBS still treats it as a video. It still goes into my non-linear linear editor as an MP4, but what I'm saying is it takes three still shots per second instead of 30 frames a second. Uh, that's already saving me 10% in file size, if you think about it. Uh, it's also um, making it easier for that duration and speed to happen. So in other words, if I take a video at 30 frames per second and I put it in my nonlinear editor and tell it to uh, show itself off to you, what it's going to do is it's going to come back. Um, probably I'd have to speed it up about 1,500 to 2,000% in order for you to really get that that just right feel where you're entertained and you're learning something watching but you're not bored. Any slower than that you might get a little bogged down, you might get bored, you might say hey this is going to be a 10 minute, 15 minute video, I'm not interested, you turn it off. But if you're around 1500 to 2000, uh, people kind of get what you're doing, they don't have to know every step, other artists will get what you're doing, but it'll be entertaining for anybody to watch it. Uh, well this particular video that I just did that's not true. It was filmed 10% slower frames, so I only had to speed it up a thousand percent. I hope that makes sense. Uh, the only other thing that was on the advanced uh, issues that I wanted to show everybody tonight was uh, basically I want to load an image. I'm going to go find it really, really fast. Uh, this image, um, we're going to take something that's already a global source of mine. And, uh, but you'll notice the global source that I have is actually, uh, there's no green right here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, color key this. And I'm going to show you how that works. Um, basically, you want to right click and you want to go to filters. And the filters window will pop up. It'll have the graphic in it. But there doesn't seem to be anything here. <laughs> now, where, where is everything? Well, that's right click, add. And you get the choices image mask or blend, crop, color correction, scroll, color key, sharpen, or chroma key. So if I were to crop it right now, it would literally give me the the uh, sliders or what have you, the numbers to uh, to crop the actual file. Uh, right now I'm cropping it from the left. As the number creeps up, it's really hard to tell the difference. But let me give you an example. From the right, I want to crop uh, 90 pixels. Boom. It just got smaller. There was a word up here before that's not there now. If I put it back to zero, you see the word. If I put it to 90, boom. There you go. Put this back to zero. Uh, so, you know, you have your crop filter. And that was interesting. How about, uh, what else do we have? Scroll? Huh. We can make the graphics scroll. <laughs> that's kind of trippy, to be honest with you. Oh no, we have uh, TV problems, bad VHS problems. <laughs> wow, sometimes you mess with this and you're like, wow, I did not know I could do that. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to get rid of scroll because we don't really want it. I'm just showing you that there's filters that do certain things. Well, there's chroma key and there's color key. Chroma key is usually a very flat matte blue or very light matte green. You can call it green screening. Your weatherman uses it. Hollywood uses it in Star Wars. It's called green screening, and people do it on Twitch, too. Chroma key is generally, they like to stick around those greens and blues. But color key gives you a little bit, just a tiny bit more color options. Um, green and blue are your, always your favorite colors for keying out the background, uh, putting something uh, over a background and, and getting rid of, of, of the color you don't like so that it's transparent. Uh, red magenta can be used, but just... For an example, uh, you would not want to use red or magenta if you had a person who had just the right shade of brown hair. They have a little bit of red in their hair. It would make their hair sort of disappear on you. So, yeah. 
but you can also use custom colors. Here's your color value, but I'm going to hit select color. What select color is going to do is if at any time you can't see this graphic or this graphic, don't worry, I'll just uh, make it where you can see it when I, when I go back and watch the video. Uh, you can pick any color you want, you know, and you can hit or miss or try to match, you know, one of these colors, but it's a whole lot easier to just hit pick screen color and you get a crosshair. And this crosshair will go anywhere, even down here on the task bar, and it'll match any color that it's sitting over. But what I'm going to do is, since I have this kind of weird teal color, that's the background that I want to get rid of, I'm going to choose the lightest shade of it. So the value of it over here is pretty close to black. The value of it over here is a lot closer to teal. I'm going to pick this teal color. Okay. And it's chosen. And when I hit OK, boom, half that graphic disappears. If you look at it here, you see what I mean? If you look at it here, you can see a great big part of the transparency has gone. But see, if I put it over the white, you can still see those areas, and they're they're frizzy, like uh, when a when a weatherman is on TV and he's not quite keyed out right. There's two things here: similarity and smoothness. These work together. You can kind of similar colors to the one you keyed out. You can pull them out. You can almost pull them out, and then you can use smoothness to kind of get rid of the rest. The reason you want to use a little bit of both is because there's going to be a little bit of that green surrounding whatever object was in front of it. Uh, you know, this this loading thing was on that green, and the more I key out, the less uh, the less of that green remains, and you can clearly see our loading and everything. So what? Well, what happens is when I hit close, I have the loading screen. I put it on white. You don't see any of that frizziness anymore. As a matter of fact, if I put tut off altogether and make this full screen for you, or at least all the way across the screen, uh, there is no green left. This is a uh, one, now that you know how to do that, you know, there's, the possibilities are endless of what you could superimpose on other things that would look really cool. So just wanted to show you that. Uh, if you guys ever come across any ideas or thoughts or, you know, you're driving down the road and a thought hits you, hey, I need to ask if this is possible, ask me. If it's possible, I'll make a tutorial and everybody will figure out how it's done and our uh, CC Twitch stream will look even better. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.